hey, we have this great religion you should try. And thus began a religious conflict of dire proportions. Can the Tyranids defend their way of life, or will they be forced to go to church? Hey guys and gals, it's Trevor again, and today we'll be playing a 500 point game of Tyranids vs Adeptus Sororitas. Without further ado, let's hear from Jared about his army. Alright, hello everyone. So against Trevor, today I'll be playing as the Adeptus Sororitas, also known as the Sisters of Battle. I'll be bringing a patrol detachment from the Order of the Ebon Chalice. And I'd just like to emphasize that this was really an experimental list that I only tried once beforehand. Let me just go through our main ability which is acts of faith so once per phase one unit from my army is able to perform an act of faith also known as use a miracle dice so how do i get miracle dice firstly i can receive one miracle dice at the start of each battle round and at the end of a phase in which any of the following conditions are met i gain one miracle dice so these two conditions are firstly vengeance where any adeptus sororitas unit from my army destroys one or more enemy units and secondly we have sacrifice where if any adeptus sororitas character unit is destroyed in my army, I gain one miracle dice as well. So first off, we have the Canoness, where I equipped her with a Blessed Blade and Bolt Pistol. Her relic is the Iron Surplus of Saint Estelia, which means that she can only be wounded on a 4 plus or above. I also equipped her with the Ebon Chalice specific Warlord trait called Terrible Knowledge. So if this Warlord is on the battlefield, the miracle dice you gain at the start of the first battle round is automatically a 6, which is very convenient, isn't it? And while this Warlord is on the battlefield, each time I spend a command point to use a stratagem, I get to roll 1d6 and on a 5 plus, that command point is refunded. Moving on to the troops, we have your good old battle sister squad with bolt guns and bolt pistols and, you know, the usual. So moving on to the elites faction, we have 5 Celestian Sacrosants, which recently have been used quite commonly because they're good for tanking a few hits, hopefully, as well as contesting points and keeping your characters safe. Moving on to fast attack, we have a squad of dominions where all four dominions are equipped with an artificer crafted storm bolter and as many of you might know we have a stratagem for one cp called blessed bolts where on unmodified hit rolls of six we immediately score two mortal wounds to the target my dominion superior is just equipped with a bolt gun and bolt pistol the other fast attack unit i brought is the seraphim squad of course i opted to bring four ministerum hand flamers to really make use of the ebon chalice specific stratagem known as cleansing flames so for one cp on every wound roll of four plus for flamer weapons i score one mortal wound to a maximum of three in the heavy support section i'm bringing one lone brave mortifier equipped with two heavy bolters and two penitent buzz blades which can be very effective against vehicles as well as just harassing units from a distance with those six heavy bolter shots and in the dedicated transport slot i just brought your very simple but effective sororitas rhino which as many people might know is a very good solution to many of our units being susceptible to small arms fire or just any breeze in the wind having these transports around to really give our units cover and to just you know generally hide in is a very effective strategy and yeah well we'll see how the game actually went See ya. Going up against the Sisters of Battle will be my cannon fodder Tyranids. I'll be bringing them in a Leviathan patrol detachment to take advantage of the new Warzone Octarius rules. The Leviathan High Fleet trait will give all units in my army a 6 plus feel no pain as long as they're within 6 inches of a synapse creature. Leading my forces is my broodlord, Mr. Worldwide. I've given him one of the new relics from Warzone Octarius, the Biomorphic Carapace. This makes him minus 1 to wound both when he gets shot at and while he's in close combat. Combat. Additionally, I've also given him one of the new Warlord traits, Swarm Leader. In the command phase, this allows him to pick one infantry, beast, or swarm unit within 9 inches to get full rerolls to hit until the next command phase. As a Broodlord, he gives plus 1 to hit to any Gene Stealer units within 6 inches during the fight phase. He can advance and charge, and he is a cast 1, deny 1 psyker who knows the powers, catalyst, and smite. In my elite slot, I will be bringing a squad of the dreaded Hive Guard. These guys use massive 
massive guns that don't require line of sight to shoot, so I think they're gonna put the hurt on Jared's army. For troops, I will be bringing one squad of Tyranid warriors armed with scything talons. I've given them their new synaptic link ability, Bioweapon Bond. In the command phase, this allows them to pick one unit within synapse range, and that unit gets plus one to hit until the next command phase. Finally, I will be bringing 13 gene stealers. These guys can advance and charge, so I'm hoping to throw them right at Jared's army. We will be playing the mission Crossfire from the GT 2021 mission pack. We will each score 5 victory points for controlling one objective, an additional 5 points for controlling more than one objective, and 5 more points if we control more objectives than our opponent. For secondary objectives, I've picked behind enemy lines, raise the banners, and assassination. Jared's picked retrieve Octarius data, engage on all fronts, and till the last. We each took turns deploying one unit at a time, starting with Jared. First, Jared deployed his battle sisters near the objective in his deployment zone. I deployed my hive guard under this water tower just close enough to my home objective. Jared then decided to put his mortifier all the way in the corner of the board to try and escape that hive guard shooting. Then I put my warriors close to the hive guard to give them plus one to hit. Jared put his cannoners also in the corner of the board. I very carefully put my gene stealers close to the front of my deployment zone. Jared then put his rhino down close to the edge of his deployment zone. The rhino is carrying both his sacrosants and his dominions. Finally, I've put my broodlord just behind my gene stealers. Jared's also declared that his seraphim will be in deep strike. Alright, let's roll off to see who goes first. And with a roll of 6 against my 5, Jared's gonna be starting. But before we begin, his rhino gets to make a 6 inch pre-game move because his dominions are inside. Alright, let's begin. In his command phase, Jared gets 1 command point. Because of his warlord trait, Jared's first miracle dice is an automatic 6. In his movement phase, his dominions and his sacrosants are both gonna disembark from the rhino. After that, they're both gonna move closer to the leftmost objective. His battle sisters are gonna budge up slightly, and his rhino is gonna move up just behind the central bunker. At the end of his movement phase, Jared's sacrosants are gonna perform the action Retrieve Octarius Data. The sacrosants will complete this action so long as at the end of Jared's turn they are still within this table quarter. On to the shooting phase, Jared's gonna spend 1 CP on the stratagem Blessed Bolts. This means that on a hit roll of 6, his dominions will deal 2 mortal wounds. Let's see if Jared gets that CP back on a 5 plus but unfortunately he doesn't. Alright, the dominions are gonna shoot at the gene stealers, hitting on threes and sixes deal two mortal wounds. Jared's gonna use his first miracle dice, which is a six to guarantee two mortal wounds. And now he's gonna roll the rest of the hits, hitting on threes. That's one more six, so Jared gets two more mortal wounds. Strength four against toughness four, wounding on fours. AP minus one, so I'm using my invulnerable save of five. And I didn't make it, so that's 2 damage going through. So now I'm gonna roll my 6 plus feel no pain for the gene stealers because they're within 6 inches of the broodlord. Starting with the 4 mortal wounds. And now from the 2 damage from the normal wound that I failed to save. And I made none of those, so that's 5 total gene stealers dead. And now the sister superior from the dominion shoots her bolter at the gene stealers. Hitting on 3s. Strength 4 against toughness 4. Wounding on 4s saving on fives, and I save it. In the charge phase, the rhino's gonna attempt to charge the gene stealers to tie them up in my deployment zone. Jared needs a 12, but he doesn't make it. That's the end of Jared's turn, and his sacrosants are still in that table quarter, so they've finished performing the action Retrieve Octarius Data. On to Tyranid's turn 1. In my command phase, I get 1 CP. My Broodlord gives the Gene Stealers rerolls to hit, and the Tyranid Warriors give the Hive Guard plus 1 to hit. In the movement phase, my Gene Stealers are going to advance. I rolled a 3, so they're gonna move 11 inches towards the Dominions. Now the Broodlord advances. I rolled a 5, so he's gonna move 13 inches towards the Rhino. And I actually remembered to raise the banners using my Tyranid Warriors. In the Psychic phase, the Broodlord's gonna cast Catalyst on the Gene Stealers. I need a 6. Because of his Sacred Rite, Aegis of the Emperor, Jerry gets to deny this on a 5+. But he doesn't get it, so Catalyst is successfully cast, and the Gene Stealers get a 5 plus feel no pain. In the shooting phase, the Hive Guard are gonna shoot at the Sacrosants. They get plus one to hit from the Warriors, so they're gonna be hitting on twos. 
Strength 8 against Toughness 3, Wounding on 2s. AP minus 2, so Jared saving on 4s. Each attack does D3 damage, but because the Sacrosans only have 1 wound each, we don't need to roll the damage roll and 3 are dead. I really want to kill these Sacrosans, so I'm going to spend 2 CP on the Stratagem Single Minded Annihilation, which will let my Hive Guard shoot again. 6 shots hitting on 2s. Wounding on 2s. Jared gets a 4 plus save. <gasps> yes! Oof, and that's a painful roll. Both those Sacrosans are dead. In the charge phase, the Gene Stealers charge the Dominions. I need a 5 to get in. But before that, Jared spends 1 CP to fire Overwatch at my Gene Stealers. Hitting on 6s. Strength 4 against Toughness 4, wounding on 4s. Invulnerable save of 5. <gasps> oh. Yes! Okay, that's rough. Alright, now my Gene Stealers are gonna attempt to charge, they need a 5. That is not a 5, I'm gonna spend 1 CP to reroll that. And this time I make it on a 6. Now the Broodlord charges the Rhino, he needs a 5 to get in. And he's in as well. On to the fight phase, my Gene Stealers are gonna pile in 3 inches so that all of them can fight. Gene Stealers each get 3 attacks for a total of 24 attacks. They're close to the Broodlord so they get plus 1 to hit and they get to reroll all their hits, hitting on 2s. That's actually a lot of 1s but thank goodness I get to reroll all of those. Strength 4 against Toughness 3, wounding on 3s and wound rolls of 6 are resolved with AP minus 4. There's one 6, so that's AP minus 4, and everything else is AP minus 1. Jared's gonna be saving all the non 6s on a 4. And that's already 9 unsaved wounds, so those dominions are dead. I'm gonna spend 1 CP on the stratagem Overrun, which lets me move and advance as if it were the movement phase because I killed those dominions. I'm gonna use this to get those gene stealers inside Jared's deployment zone so I can score behind enemy lines. Alright, now my Broodlord is gonna fight the Rhino. 6 attacks hitting on 2s. Strength 5 against Toughness 7, wounding on 5s, but I reroll all wounds. So that roll of 6 is resolved with AP minus 6 and flat damage 3, while the 5 is resolved with AP minus 3 and damage D3. Jared's Rhino has a 6 plus invulnerable save, so he's going to be saving both of these on 6s. He failed both, so I'm going to roll that D3 damage. So that's 3 damage plus the flat 3 damage from the other hit, making it 6 damage going through to the Rhino. This brings the Rhino down to 4 wounds. This takes the Rhino down a wound track so it gets D3 attacks when it fights back. So 1 attack hitting on 6. And that's a miss. So at the end of this battle round, I score 2 victory points for my Gene Stealers being in Jared's deployment zone as part of my secondary behind enemy lines. Jared's Sacrosans did manage to complete their action, retrieve Octarius data, but he needs to complete it twice to score any victory points. So no victory points for Jared just yet. Let's move on to Sororitas turn 2. In his command phase, Jared gets 1 command point and he scores 5 victory points for holding 1 objective with his battle sisters. He's gonna roll his miracle dice and what a useful dice indeed in his movement phase his battle sisters are gonna move up a bit so they can get some line of sight on my gene stealers the mortifier is gonna do the same the seraphim squad is also gonna choose this point to fly down from the heavens and land just outside my deployment zone jared's gonna spend one cp on the stratagem deadly descent which is gonna allow those seraphim to fire all their weapons right now he's gonna check and see if he gets that cp back on a five plus <laughs> Hiya! 300. <laughs> Back to 2 points. Alright, so the Seraphim are gonna shoot at the Hive Guard, starting with the Hand Flamers, 4d6 automatic hits. Strength 4 against Toughness 5, wounding on 5s. Those rolls of 6 are resolved with AP minus 1, while the 5s are resolved with AP 0. I'm gonna attempt to save the 5s first, saving on 4s. I save two of those, and now I save those AP minus one hits on a five. And I save one more, so that's three damage going through. I'm gonna roll my six plus, feel no pain because the warriors are close by. 
and I make none of those, so that's one dead hive guard. All right, now the Seraphim are gonna shoot the rest of their weapons. They get five bolt pistol shots and one plasma pistol shot represented by the red dice, hitting on threes. Strength 4 on the Bolt Pistols and Strength 7 on the Plasma Pistol against the Hive Guard's toughness of 5, so the Bolt Pistols are wounding on 5s and the Plasma Pistol is wounding on a 3. So the Plasma Pistol is AP-3 and I can't save that, but the Bolt Pistol is AP-1 so I still get a 5 plus save. And I save it, now I'm gonna roll my 6 plus Feel No Pain for the 1 damage from the Plasma Pistol. And no luck, so one hive guard is down to two wounds. Moving on to the shooting phase, the battle sisters are gonna shoot at the gene stealers. Their guns are rapid fire one, and they're within half range of the gene stealers, so they get double the number of shots hitting on threes. Strength four against toughness four, wounding on fours. Saving everything on my invulnerable save of five, I failed too, but the Gene Stealers are still under the effects of Catalyst from the last Psychic phase, so they get a 5 plus feel no pain. Alright, I make one, so just one Gene Stealer dies. Now the Mortifier is gonna shoot its heavy bolters at the Gene Stealers, hitting on threes. Yay! Strength 5 against Toughness 4, wounding on threes. Save on fives. It's 2 damage, I roll my 5 plus, feel no pain. And I still fail 1, so one guy takes 1 damage and he dies. Now the Seraphim get to shoot again because earlier they shot during the movement phase and not during the shooting phase. Jared's gonna spend 1 CP on the stratagem Cleansing Flames, which means that for the Seraphim Hand Flamers on a wound roll of 4, they deal 1 mortal wound in addition to any damage they deal. The Seraphim shoot at the Hive Guard starting with their Hand Flamers, 4d6 automatic hits. Strength 4 versus Toughness 5, wounding on 5s. So Jerry gets 1 5 and 2 4s, so those 4s don't cause normal wounds, but they do cause 1 mortal wound each. AP 0, so I'm saving the 1 normal wound on a 4. And now I roll my 6 plus Feel No Pain for the 2 mortal wounds. I make 1, so that's 2 damage, and 1 more Hive Guard dies. Now the Seraphim shoot the rest of their weapons, 5 Bolt Pistol shots and 1 Plasma Pistol shot hitting on 3s. Jared's gonna supercharge the Plasma Pistol shot for extra damage, but if he rolls a 1 on the hit roll, it will kill the user. So he didn't roll a 1, and now the Bolt Pistols are wounding on 5s and the Plasma Pistol wounding on 3. The Plasma Pistol is AP-3 so I can't save that but I can attempt to save the Bolt Pistol which is AP-0 on a 4+. I fail so that's 1 damage from the Bolt Pistol and 2 damage from the Plasma Pistol. I'm gonna roll my 6+, plus feel no pain. And I make none of my feel no pain so that last Hive Guard is dead. Jared gets 1 Miracle Dice for destroying one of my units. Yes! That's more like now the Rhino is gonna shoot at my Broodlord, hitting on 4s. Ah uh, yeah, take that! It's strength 4 against the Broodlord's toughness 5, so wounding on 5s. However, the Broodlord has his relic which makes him minus 1 to wound, so that's wounding on 6s. AP 0, saving on 4s. And now I get my 6 plus, feel no pain. And amazingly, I make it. Now the Battle Sisters charge the Gene Stealers, they need a 4 to get in. Yes! <laughs> Jared's gonna CP reroll that. And this time he makes it, and now he's gonna try and refund his CP on a 5. Alright, no luck with that, but the Battle Sisters are in combat with the Gene Stealers. Now the Mortifier is gonna try and charge the Gene Stealers, Jared needs a 10 to get in. And unfortunately, he doesn't make it. On to the fight phase, the Battle Sisters are gonna fight the Gene Stealers. Hitting on fours. That was a really good roll. Alright. Strength three against toughness four, wounding on fives. And that is no wounds. All the charging units have fought, so now I'm gonna pick a unit to fight, and I choose my Broodlord to fight the Rhino. Six attacks, hitting on twos. Strength 5 against Toughness 7, wounding on 5s and re-rolling all wounds. Jared saving everything using his invulnerable save of 6. Oh! Oh! 
Oh, so that's I never seen that one before. <laughs> that is a harsh roll, and with flat 3 damage on two of those attacks, the Rhino is dead. Jared's gonna roll his 6 plus explosion. But unfortunately, the Rhino doesn't explode. Since the Rhino's dead and can't fight back anymore, I choose my Gene Stealers to fight back against the Battle Sisters next. I make my 3 inch pylon move to get everyone into combat. The Gene Stealers are hitting on 3s and they're still gonna reroll all their hits cause that lasts until my next command phase. Strength 4 against Toughness 3, wounding on 3s. AP minus 1, so the Battle Sisters are saving on 4s. And they only failed 2 of those, so just 2 Battle Sisters die. And after the fight, I'm gonna consolidate the rest of my Gene Stealers into the Battle Sisters. Okay, that's the end of Jared's turn, on to Tyranid's turn 2. In my command phase, I get 1 command point. I score 5 victory points for holding 1 objective, but I also score 5 additional victory points because I hold more objectives than Jared. I also score 1 extra command point because I raise the banners on the objective that I'm holding. I also declare that my brutal Lord gives the rerolls to hit to the Gene Stealers and my Tyranid Warriors give plus one to hit to themselves. In the movement phase, my Broodlord advances towards the Seraphim. I rolled a two so he gets to move 10 inches. And in the Psychic phase, the Broodlord casts Catalyst on the Gene Stealers. I need a six for this to go off. Jared gets to try and deny this on a five plus. but he doesn't make it so those gene stealers get their 5 plus feel no pain yet again. Moving on to the charge phase, the broodlord is gonna charge the seraphim. But before that, Jared spends 1 CP to fire overwatch. He checks to see if he gets that CP refunded on a 5 plus, but no luck. 4 d6 automatic hits from the flamers. Strength 4 against toughness 5, wounding on 5s but minus 1 to wound because of the broodlord's relic so wounding on 6s. AP minus 1, saving on 5s. 6 plus, feel no pain. And I fail all of those, so the Broodlord takes 3 wounds. And the Seraphim fire all their pistols, hitting on 6. But no hits. Alright, now the Broodlord needs a 4 to charge. And he gets it, so he's in. On to the fight phase, the Broodlord fights, hitting on 2s. Strength 5 versus Toughness 3, wounding on 3s and rerolling all wounds. Rolls of 6 are AP minus 6, everything else is AP minus 3, so Jared's saving everything on his 5 plus invulnerable save. Jared's gonna use his miracle dice of a 6 for one guaranteed save, and now he rolls the rest. And he gets one more, so that's one Seraphim left alive. Jared's removed the Seraphim in such a way that the last Seraphim is now out of engagement range. At this point, the Broodlord could consolidate in after fighting, but the truth is that I just kind of forgot. Ah well, gotta own up to my own mistakes. Now Jared gets to pick a unit to fight back, so the Battle Sisters are gonna fight the Gene Stealers, hitting on fours. But unfortunately, the Battle Sisters miss everything. Now the Gene Stealers fight back, hitting on threes, rerolling all hits. Strength 4 against Toughness 3, wounding on threes. The sixes are AP minus 4, and everything else is AP minus 1. Jared's gonna save the AP minus 1 hits first on a 4. Unfortunately, he fails 3 of those, so the last 3 battle sisters are now dead. I spend 1 CP on the stratagem overrun again to allow the gene stealers to move and advance. I rolled a 5, so the gene stealers get 13 inches of movement, but they're just gonna use this to hide behind the cover and get out of line of sight of that mortifier. Jerry needs to take a morale test for his seraphim, but he's gonna use that miracle dice of a 1 to automatically pass it. At the end of my turn, my gene stealers are still in Jerry's deployment zone so I score 2 VPs as part of behind enemy lines. Let's move on to Sororitas turn 3. In his command phase, Jarek gets 1 CP, but because he's no longer controlling any objectives, he doesn't get any victory points. Jarek gets a miracle dice, and in his movement phase, the mortifier is going to move to the right so that he can get line of sight on those gene stealers. The Canonus is going to advance, 
Jared rolls a 6 so she moves up onto his home objective. The Seraphim is gonna move away from the Broodlord onto the rightmost objective. In his shooting phase, Jared's gonna spend 1 CP on cleansing flames again for the Seraphim. Let's see if he gets his CP back on a 5 plus. And now the Seraphim shoots 2d6 automatic flamer hits at the Broodlord. Strength 4 versus toughness 5 but minus 1 to wound so wounding on 6s. Because of the stratagem Cleansing Flames, any wound rolls of 4 and above cause 1 mortal wound. So that's 2 mortal wounds and 1 normal wound. AP minus 1 on the normal wound so saving on 5s. I fail it so now I'm gonna roll my 6 plus feel no pain for that wound plus the 2 mortal wounds. And I save one, so the Broodlord is still alive and down to one wound. Now the Mortifier is gonna unload on the Gene Stealers, hitting on threes. Strength five versus toughness four, wounding on threes. Five plus invulnerable save. Each of these is two damage. I'm gonna roll my five plus feel no pain from Catalyst. I only save one, so that's one 2 damage hit and one 1 damage hit going through, so that's two Gene Stealers dead. On to the charge phase, the Mortifier is gonna charge the Gene Stealers. It needs a 9 to get in. Jared's gonna spend one CP to reroll that, but still nothing. Jared's gonna try and refund his CP on a 5 plus, and he gets it. All right, that's the end of Jared's turn. Let's move on to Tyranid's turn three. In my command phase, I get one command point. I score five victory points for controlling one objective with the warriors and an additional one victory point because I raise the banners on that objective. I also declare that the Broodlord gives his swarm leader rerolls to himself and the warriors give plus one to hit to themselves. In the movement phase, my Broodlord advances so he moves a total of 9 inches towards the Seraphim. And now the Gene Stealers advance, so they're gonna move 10 inches around the wall towards the Canonus. In the Psychic phase, the Broodlord smites the Seraphim. I need a 5 for this to go off. Jared's gonna attempt to deny this on a 5 plus. He doesn't get it, but he really needs to keep that Seraphim alive, so he's gonna spend 1 CP to try and deny it again on a 4 plus. Unfortunately, he doesn't make it and I don't need to roll the damage roll for Smite because the Seraphim only has one wound. On to the charge phase, the Gene Stealers are gonna charge the Canonus, they need a 3 to get in. And they're in! In the fight phase, the Gene Stealers fight the Canonus, they hit on 3s and they no longer reroll their hits because the Broodlord gave it to himself instead. Strength 4 against Toughness 3, wounding on 3s. However, the Canonus is carrying the relic, the Iron Supplies of Saint Estela. So wound rolls of 1 to 3 fail and the Gene Stealers are only wounding on 4s. Rolls of 6 are AP minus 4, while the rest are AP minus 1. The Canonus is gonna attempt to save the AP minus 1 hits first on a 4. So that's 3 wounds and now saving the AP minus 4 hits on the Canonus's invulnerable save of 4. So that's another wound for a total of 4 wounds bringing the Canonus down to 1 wound. Alright, I really want to kill this Canonus so I'm gonna spend 1 CP on the stratagem implant attack. For any character wounded by a Tyranid unit, I get to roll 1d6 and on a 2 plus they suffer 1 mortal wound. And thank goodness I roll a 2 so the Canonus is now dead. At the end of my turn, I've killed the Canonus, which is Jared's Warlord, so I score 4 victory points as part of Assassination, and my Gene Stealers are still in his deployment zone, so I score 2 more victory points as part of Behind Enemy Lines. At this point in the game, Jared just has the Mortifier left, and my units are holding all the rest of the objectives on the map. Now the Mortifier is powerful, but with just 2 rounds left in the game, there just isn't gonna be a enough time for it to get around to killing all my Tyranids. As such, Jared is gonna concede and the Tyranids are gonna be victorious today. So what a game, I think those new Warzone Octarius rules really came in super handy in helping me secure that win. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you really want to support the channel, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash trevorgoesmeep. I will be adding Jared into the Discord server which you can get access to if you become a patron. A huge thank you 
you to Jared for playing against me, and thank you to Chloe, Jared's girlfriend, and Kara, my girlfriend, for helping us to film this battle report. We really couldn't have done it without you. Alright, hope you had fun, and I'll see you all next time.